All right, so a few weeks ago, I uploaded a YouTube video where I made this design. Someone left a comment on that video and they said that they were interested in learning how I did it, so I figured I'd make a quick tutorial. As of right now, I'm calling this technique a halftone montage, but I'm sure you could call it any number of things. I don't really care what you call it or want to label it. That's just what I'm going to call it for now. So with that being said, I came up with a whole new design that uses this technique. That way I can kind of show you a little bit more easily how I came up with this effect. So let me show you how it's done. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. Of course, this is the final design. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just going to strip back the design and get back to the very first thing that we're gonna start with. Of course, you can use this effect in many different ways in many different places. But for this instance, I'm using a logo. But for you, it could be a shape. It could be the entire canvas. It could be a letter. It could be a lot of different things. So just pick whatever you want. So the very first thing that we're gonna do is just start dropping in photos. So I dropped in this photo. I added a mask that is the exact same shape that I want to contain the photos in. So in this instance, the logo. So that way it is inside of this box. And from there, it's really just adding in enough pictures to cover the entire shape that you're going to be filling. So you can just start dropping things in and you might have to do some more editing to the masks of the objects. As you can see here, uh, was this one, as you can see here, I kind of had to do a little bit more fine tuning in order to get it to fit the way that I wanted to. So sometimes you might have to go in, get in the nitty gritty. Sometimes it's just, you know, a soft brush and you can just brush over. But really, you're just trying to get everything to fit and you don't want to have any harsh lines like you might see here. So you're just trying to kind of get rid of those and blend them together so that way they seem a little bit more seamless. All right, so now that we've got all the photos, you know, pretty much placed the way that we want to, we can start working on this effect. But before we move on, let me tell you about today's sponsor, me. As of right now, I've got a couple different digital assets on my store, some that are free and some that you can purchase. I already have more plans to add things to the store, so as time goes on, I'll be adding a bunch of different things. I'm just trying to add a bunch of digital assets that I think are useful and that I think you might also find useful. So if you're interested in checking those out, feel free to check the link in the description. Now let's get back to the video. So for me, I grouped all the photos into one folder so that way I can edit all of them instead of having to do it individually. So the very first thing that I would do is I would just create a empty layer. I'd go up to here, click fill and change this to fill 50% gray. And then I will turn that into a smart object and then I will add some noise. You know, you can choose however much noise you want or don't want, depending on the amount of noise that you add, will kind of give you a different effect in the end. So you can kind of play around with that. And that's why I turned the layer into a smart object. So you can go back and make some tweaks if you're not super happy with the way that it ends up. So for me personally, I actually have two layers of noise. The first one is at four, and the second one I believe is at 12. So I have two different kinds of noises that are kind of going on. You know, you could do one, you could do two, three, four, and you can experiment a lot with how much or how little noise that you use. But I would still recommend adding using noise and I'll show you why later. So just to show you guys just quickly, as you can see here, this is with the noise and this is without it. Here's with one on, here's with two. Now from there, the next thing that you're gonna do is you're going to add a half tone pattern and turn it onto the overlay blend mode. That's what this will look like now. And of course you can play around with the size of the half tones, the specific half tone pattern that you're using. You could even change this. So for instance, I have a pack that has them. So instead of doing the half tones like this, it could be these lines instead. Really, it just depends on what you're going for. I really like this half tone pattern just like this. So that's what I'm gonna go with. So once you have this set up and you're pretty happy with where it's at, pretty much the last thing that you're going to do is add a threshold adjustment. And you can kind of tweak this effect to kind of change how much black and white ratio there is, you know, and what I would say is get it, you know, roughly to where you want it. And what you might end up having to do is go into your folder and then individually change the luminance values or the contrast values of each of the photos. So in this scenario, as you can see, this photo is pretty dark and right here, you know, it's kind of creating a line. So what I did is I just created a levels adjustment and I added a mask so that way I could just kind of fine tune it just to be right around here and I just kind of smooth that out just a little bit more. It's not perfect, but it's much better than what it was and it doesn't really have that sharp line. Something else that you might consider doing is inverting one of the layers. So for instance, if I come down here, if you remember me making the mask for this, you know, it looks fine, especially right here, 
but he's kind of blending into the skateboard and I really want him to stand out a little bit more. So what I did was I inverted it and now you're still getting the ramp and everything and you can more clearly see him. And I did this in another place with another photo down here because I wanted these two to blend together a little bit more seamlessly. So as you can see, this doesn't look quite as good because this part of the photo is so dark, but this photo is really light. So if I invert it, now it just blends a little bit better than before. And really that's pretty much it for this effect. But I will go over a couple of different things that you can kind of change or tweak or show you just a couple of little things that you might do or might want to keep in mind. So like I said earlier, the amount of noise that you put in will affect the final image that you get. So let me turn off my noise layers so you can see what it looks like without any noise. So if I go over here to my layers panel and I just remove those, as you can see, it just kind of creates a more even and clean looking halftone pattern, which, you know, if that's what you're going for, great, you can have that. But for me, I like to add some noise. It just kind of makes the images look a little bit more smoother and adds a little bit more grit to the design. So if I add only one image with just 4%, you know, it doesn't do a whole lot, but makes a little bit more. Then if I add even more noise on top of that, as you can see, it adds even more and it just smooths out the images, which is something that I like, makes it a little bit more gritty. And so you don't really see all the individual dots. Uh, it makes it just a little bit more gritty, kind of looked a little bit more worn, which is, you know, kind of the effect that I'm going for. But like I said, really depends on what you want. And also, like I was saying earlier, you can even change the halftone patterns. So let's go in and kind of do what I said earlier. So as you can see, now it has a completely different look. And you know, maybe that's what you're going for. Maybe you kind of want this style instead. I mean, I guess if you wanted to, you could even try blending some of them. You can try doing multiple. You know, I've never done it, but you know, let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens if we were to blend two different ones. So we're gonna do the line pattern and a half tone pattern. So, you know, I've never even tried this before, but honestly, that looks pretty cool. If you wanted to kind of get some waves, but also kind of have the half tone pattern, it works. And another thing that you could do is you can add a gradient map. So if that's the look that you were going for, you could even do that. And for instance, we'll do it for same colors as the original design and we'll see what that looks like. So if you wanted to add a gradient map, here's what it would look like. So as you can see, it's a pretty simple effect, but you can do a lot of different things with it and you can kind of change it to make your own. Like I said, you can change the shape that you're putting it in. You can change the photos that you're doing. You can invert things. You can do different levels adjustments. You can add gradient maps, different half tones and combine half tones. You can change the amount of noise that you want. There's just lots of little things that you can tweak in order to make this effect your own. Hopefully you're able to take away something from this tutorial and you can make something using this effect of your own. And if you do end up using this effect, I'd love to see what you come up with to make sure that you send it to me on Instagram. And as always, if you found this video helpful or entertaining in any way, I'd appreciate it if you would check out the rest of my channel and then consider subscribing. I hope to see you in the next video.